I get up at 5 o'clock, we start makeup at 6.30 and uh, hopefully we can start to shoot at 11, 12 o'clock. Sometimes you, you don't shoot until 3 o'clock in the afternoon and you have been up since 5 o'clock so, and then you go on until it's dark. Alright, shooting this time. Camera set. No, 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 no. It took about three hours to do the makeup, and uh, and you have to refresh it all the time, over and over again, because of the rain and and so I mean there's always something to do, thank God, in all this waiting. And uh, if there are not, we try to to have a lot of books or some papers to read. And so, yeah, try to do something else. And, Drink loads of coffee. This video is called You Don't Understand Me. <laughs> this is this is working for me, Greg. This is working for me. Shall I show what he looks like? So I said to, to Tom Cruise when I did that real big picture, I said, Tom, I reckon you're great. And Tom replied? Tom uh, thought I was fantastic. Yeah. You're gonna love it. Yeah. Yes, All right, everybody, let's give a big hand for Marie from Roxanne. Thank you. It's a really good thing to shoot videos because then you're always looking good. I mean, if something goes wrong, you can do it again. So I think it's so much more it's worse, I think, to, to, to play live. Yeah, it's a strange life. <laughs> it's really weird. <laughs> I never really had any sort of goals, you know, like cracking the states or being on a world tour. It's, it's just a sort of been a natural flow of success, thank God. And so I never really had the um, need for any compromise within my work, which is great. It's really fun, but. Uh that's something that I really miss sometimes, that old friendship that we had in those days. Because nowadays when we work, have a working relation, it's so different to have this, it's not... I really miss that, I'm a little bit sad feelings because we had so much fun together, just as friends. I think I'm at my best when I feel that Marie is spending a lot of time with Roxette because then I have to be on my edge all the time. <laughs> it's fun to be part of uh, something that goes um, uh, so well that Roxette is doing. It's, it's nice to be able to have an idea and uh, basically you don't really have any limits where it can go. You can, you can just sort of, you know, fool around a bit in your mind and, uh, you know, explore things, which is interesting. Of course, it's a good situation to be in. I remember once Per said, can you, can you imagine to tour in America? <laughs> Wow, no, no, no. Or maybe to do a tour in Europe, or can you imagine to, to play in New York, or, or you know, Munich, or whatever. And, and I, oh no, it felt like it was something that was really, really far away, and oh, then you have to work so hard, and you, oh no, I, it's so tough, the music business. And then, oh, but hey, we have to someday 
do something together in, in English. Do you think the, the LP has been so successful all over the world? What, I mean, what were the ingredients that made it so? Apart from the fact it's obviously a very commercial record. Uh, I don't know. When we, when we tried to get an international release, every, in, in America, for instance, everyone said to us, hey, you can't get these songs on the radio because it doesn't sound American enough. And as soon as it started play, begin, begin to get play, airplay in America, everyone says, hey, this is a big advantage because it stands out on the radio. It's a very kind of international name, isn't yeah. it? I don't, I don't think most people who, who buy the records know that we're from Sweden. In America, everyone thinks we're from England, and in England, everyone thinks we're from the States. She's got the look. She's got the look. Just came off a big tour. We've been touring uh, Sweden just before Christmas, '88, and I was on vacation. And you were here in Stockholm, and we got this phone call. And, hey, they're playing your song in the States. Really? Is it released? Yeah. No. <laughs> and uh, in nine weeks, it was number one. It went very fast, and then we oh, you must come here and must do a video on the book and everything. Was I, have, I had never been in America before, so for me it was really shocked when I, the first time I come to, came to New York. Oh, it was so big, and oh wow, what is this? What is happening? Put out on a, when it was put out, when it got to number one, that was on EMI America, who'd already turned you down, hadn't yes. they? Yes. 
exactly. What, what, did you, what did you think to that irony? Them, in fact, having a hit with you after having turned you down. We, we weren't really surprised when everyone turned it down. It's like the same old story. I mean, it's, it's really hard to come from Sweden and try to get a rec record deal in the States. So uh, I think it's quite typical for the music business. I've always wanted to be a musician. I mean, before you were being a musician, yes, did you want to yes, be one? Yes, a singer. And, uh, and uh, I decided that when I was six years old. It was very natural because I come from a very musical family. And we have always, since I was a kid, was singing a lot together with my sisters and my brother. And my father was a brilliant singer. And, uh, and I studied music for a few years, but it was very boring. And so I, I wanted to be on stage. I wanted to perform. I'm a performer. But it, it took a very long time for me to, to, to get that self-confidence. What about you, Per? I mean, where did your, how did you get involved in music in the first place? At a very early age, six, seven years old, I really became a pop freak, you know, <laughs> everything. I started collecting records and... and uh, what did your father do? What, what was your he was a plumber. Doing? We don't really have a, mu a musical uh, tradition in our family at all. We had a piano, but we sold it. <laughs> <laughs> I never really wanted to be a musician or, or be involved with the music business. I really didn't know anything about that at all. I just wanted to... I loved records and collecting records. And but you were a big Bowie fan, weren't you? Yeah. It's strange because the, the school I was in, nobody really liked Bowie at all, except me. So uh, I had all this stupid <laughs> platform, <laughs> you know, platform shoes. A lot of people have yeah. yeah. When I was in, in school, when I was like 16, I got involved with, with a couple of friends who were playing in a band. And I visited their rehearsal studio and was there for a couple of hours. It was just like a different world. What were you playing? And I wasn't playing you anything, were playing. you know. I was just a friend, you know. Then I made up my mind, hey, I want to, I want to play an instrument. One of my school, friends from school, we, we started this band together. And three years after that, we got a record deal with EMI. Six weeks after that, it was a number, we had a number one. Great. It's really fast. Hold on tight, you know she's a little bit dangerous. Well, listen, when you met, first met a long time ago, didn't you? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Can you remember what you thought of each other when you first met each other? One of his first concerts with his own band, Jimmy Taylor. And I remember, I thought, well, he has something. He's, but I, I think that he was a little bit too childish, childish and too... <laughs> he was very... You, know, you didn't on, like my hat. You now, on the stage, he was really... Oh, Diva, <laughs> maybe it was, you know. And I think that... Oh, no. So, Pear, what, what were your first impressions of Marie? She was always the loudest one in her band. She was having long, dark hair, very thin, big mouth. <laughs> in in 80, 81, I think, was the first time we worked together in a recording studio. Mm. And I remember we were sitting in the nights and, and dreamed about maybe someday we can do something in English and have a success in the world, you know. <laughs> Now passing over Hamburg, we are proceeding Frankfurt to Zurich, over the Alps, to uh, uh, Nice, and estimate to land in one hour and forty minutes at two o'clock. Since I first saw you, but I still love you. 
what does this mean? A very popular band! Un gruppo molto famoso! Rock, set, rock! You know, you go around the world, you go to all these cities you've always wanted to go to, yes, at the end of the day, you don't even want to go after the hotel, because all you want to do really is go home. Do you feel that? Yes. It's so strange. A few years ago, when you had been working very hard here at home, and then you have maybe two weeks vacation. Oh, I long to go to Canary Islands and be in the sun. Or, but now, when we have a, a week of, uh, really, you just want to be at home. It's, it's very exhausting in a way. But on the other hand, it's it's a dream come true. The problem, the problem is that the dream isn't really what you dreamed about before. Maybe in Milan. Or somewhere in the world. So, I mean, is it difficult for you making this new record? I mean, are you apprehensive about how it will turn out after the colossal success of Look Sharp? Does it seem a difficult project because of Look Sharp's success? You can't think about it because or you must try to not think about it because. Then you can't do nothing. I mean, we would be lying if we were saying we weren't working under pressure. I mean, it's, it's a big pressure. But maybe the greatest pressure is, you know, the, the fear of the pressure, in fact. Yeah. You're not going to take 12 months to make this record? No, no. Right? person that's that's a guy which I have the studio uh, in Hampstead with I've been working with him since 1977 we formed the Julian together a long time ago we still write songs he's contributed with a couple of songs for the new album as well he co-wrote uh, listen to your heart for instance When you're working in Helmstad, I mean, it doesn't have to be perfectly right, does no, it? No. I mean, do you sometimes find it more enjoyable working there? It depends. Yeah, sometimes it, it's it's more enjoyable because you have this idea and you... you <clears throat> I, can, I can phone uh, Mats in the, almost in the middle of the night saying, hey, I got this idea, I have to go to the studio. Come over, and he comes and we work and for eight hours or something. Gary Glitz, they come out. Oh, okay. Come on in, come on in, come on in. Dum, dum. I don't take rune tone and put C. Over the years. When, when, when I'm, you're going to the, to the studio to make a demo, I always find myself being less prepared all the time because if, if I'm less prepared, I won't get disappointed. You know what I mean? I have the lyric and I have the chorus, but I don't have the arrangements. I just fiddle about and see what happens. <laughs> Go direct, Toro. Good 
Take a walk, it's such a beautiful day. The sun is up, you know it's going your way. Big love is... From the first time, I was really suspicious when I heard it for the first time. I thought it was um, too much pop. Got a southern kind of look in your eyes. But she's a miracle, she's all that you need. Like the water and the air that you breathe. Hey now, reach the sky. That's a southern kind of look in your smile. And you know what love can do. And you know what hearts can do. Så prøv ikke at du på den. På den her Ja. det er helt slægt. The big love. We sit down and, 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 and figure out what we are going to do with the songs and, uh, and um, try a lot of arrangements. <laughs> I stället för att sjunga en sån där refräng så gör man något sånt typ talande, något sånt på pukpartiet. Alltså man gör en refräng utan musik. It's taking the wheel. The big love. <laughs> ja. Nej, men det kan jag. The big love. Ja, det kan jag. Det är rap. Big love. Ja, men man kan ha en massa konstiga djur, kaffekoppar, sånt som skrämmer. Och bara helt massa till. Ja, men sån här karneval. <laughs> men det är underbart, John. Du har den karaktären på sig. The big love. Ja, det kan du. Sometimes we keep the melody very, very close to the demo. And sometimes... Uh, She she has some, uh, uh, some good things saying that hey uh, this melody sounds not good enough can we change this so maybe we should improvise the end of this thing here maybe we should take this change the chorus the third time or the fourth time it comes around. It's, ta it's taking the wheels. The big love. Cause head on the heel. The big love. The small world. Awesome. <laughs> it's taking the wheel. The big love. Det är jättekort. Vi måste hitta på något annat. Det var inte så. 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 Det
too. So it's and uh, it, it took a while. And he's uh, very good at to put pair me together to 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 find a way in between. When we, when we started out, Roxette, I think Clara's made my music danceable for the first time in my life. What about Anders? What about his role? He knows everything about te technology and he loves computers. And, and so I think Clarence and Anders, they really complete each other very, very good. How the hell are the TV apparatus and the computers What about Ala? He is great because he's so um, always so calm. So sometimes you want to... No, <laughs> shut his face now. But he's. But that's good when when you work with music because parent and myself we really want you know everything should be done now. So, to the outsider who comes to a recording studio mm -hmm. and sits there for a few hours, it can seem like one of the most tedious jobs in the world. I mean, just it seems like all that's going on is you know the same thing is being listened to again and again and again and mm -hmm. and, and endlessly repeated. It's almost like nothing is happening. You know, obviously that isn't the case to the people working there. No, of course not, but um, I can understand it seems like that. Yeah, it is <laughs> sometimes. <laughs> Fisman är Suddenly we found Jonas a very important part of our sound. Sometimes Mats is doing a tremendous solo and, and uh, yeah. we think, hey, maybe we should use that solo. And then Jonas comes in and does something totally different because they're two different persons. Det är lite stressat på slutet där. Jag var ingen barn. Mycket bättre ljud tycker jag. Det är väl lika bra att spela in när det ska vara på en gång. Uh, ska vi göra intro först och att vi ja. samma tummar? Det kan vi göra. Just. Det var en gång som inte satt alltså. Var det? Ja, det var det faktiskt. Jag brukar nog. Ja, det tycker jag också. Ja, jättebra Jonas. Ja. Is this Australia? And then they had two calls coming out this and there'll be a break and they'll come back with more calls. Tonight, via the magic of satellites, we're bringing you uh, probably one of the hottest bands in the world at the moment. Rex have been trying to track them down since they uh, hit the top of the charts this time last year with their first single, The Look. Since then, there's been five top ten hits, including another number one. Of course, talking about Roxette and uh, Pear and Marie are in the uh, studios of Studio 33 at Broadcasting House Swedish National Radio in Stockholm. Hi, and welcome to the program. Thank you. Thank you. We've got Daniel now listening to uh, Triple M in Sydney. Which question, Daniel? Um, Marie, what's the most embarrassing thing that's happened to you in your career? <laughs> uh, well, 
I think it was when I started to sing when I was six years old, and it was the most embarrassing thing in my whole life. You turned all red, or <laughs> yes, what? I turned all red. <laughs> it was in front of um, all very old ladies who uh, was having a you know a kind of a meeting, and uh, my mother, she was one of them, and she had said to them, "Oh, well, I have a daughter; she can sing very well." So. <laughs> So it was very embarrassing for me, but it was the first time in my life when I was singing in front of an audience. Let's take another track for it on uh, Rock Set. This is Sleeping Single. <laughs> Back announce a single and then just say you can reach us. I'll give you the number here on this number and then just say we'll be back after the break. I'll give you a five second call so that you know it's about to fade and then I'll open up your mic and you come in whenever. This is me, it's about real just heard sleeping single. So single to the last. Stand by, guys, whenever you're ready. Okay. Well, this is Marie. And this is Per, and we, we are rock set. set. And you just heard Sleeping Single. And you can phone in and talk to us on 0080333000, and we'll be back after this break. Thank you, guys, that was fantastic. Okay. Right, with the new album. Thanks guys, that was great. Okay. Thank you. 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 Actually not. It's always the the biggest problem is always to, to find a good idea for the sleeve and to find a good title. So so uh, we, at the moment we don't. We're, uh, We're working we, very hard. It's called it. a new <laughs> album. <laughs> uh, with the with the success that you've had all around the world, has there been any pressure for you guys to move out of uh, out of Sweden and, and make your base say either in America or England or somewhere else? Mm. Yeah, everyone. When we started to work on the new album, everyone said, hey, you have to go to Los Angeles and work with American producers and American musicians. But we didn't want to do that. We wanted to develop our own sound and work with, with our Swedish musicians and our Swedish producer. I want to stay here. And, um, and uh, especially in the summertime here, it's very, very nice. And, and Sweden, the whole country, is it's a very beautiful country. So, so it's nice to, you feel safe here and that's nice. All right, well, listen, thank you very much for your time tonight on uh, Rock Sat. Thank you. And uh, congratulations on the success of the record. Uh, we hope there's, uh, there's many more to come for Rock Sat. Thank, thank you. you very, very much. Yes. Yes, I'm Portons. Thanks for doing this. You've been great tonight. It sounded great on radio, too. What, what were the ideas today? Now, the first one is for the National Countdown, and the program's name is Take 40 Australia. Take 40 Australia. Yeah, and if you could say something like, we always listen to it in Sweden. Something stupid. We we'll do one in Swedish. <laughs> yeah. Can you? Of yes, course. Of course we can. You say, hey, uh, you say, hey, Maria Fabio, I said, do stop at take for your street. I mean, do stop at take. Yeah, I said the things. Okay. Okay. Hey, I hope I am Maria. And that's a pair of your rock set. Do you listen to take for your street? Sounds like we're playing the tape backwards. <laughs> <laughs> Thank what? you. Thank you. Thank you very much. What are you up to today? Back oh. to the studio. Yeah. <laughs> we're doing some vocals today. You know I'm building the big, big love. Big love. Oh, no, no. Big love. Bring it into the small world. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mort. Marie writes also, right, of course. But I mean, you write 30 times for every three that she writes, or whatever, <laughs> you know? I mean, I mean do, you feel, do you feel an obligation to her to kind of put more of her material on the record? Sometimes I do, but in the end, it's, it's down to... I'm not, I'm not saying that, hey, we have to record my material. It's just that the best material available is going to make the record. 
And uh, the problem for Marie is that she doesn't write English lyrics, and, and also she does. She's not really. She's never been writing like top 40 material ever. I mean, the solo records she's made has been like slightly different from what Roxette is doing. So it's it's quite hard for her to write like a like a joy ride or the look that like kind of song. Does it concern you that Pear writes virtually all the material? Well, sometimes I get very jealous. I don't know. Maybe maybe I, maybe I, I write too much, so she feels a little bit inferior. I don't know. Sometimes groups break up because people within the groups squabble over the, who's writing. The yeah, songs, who's yeah. getting more publishing royalties? Yeah, you, I know. you don't worry about that. No, I don't because I, I think I, I don't find myself in saying that. Hey, I, I want to write 100% um, of the material. I just want to make the best Roxette album ever made you know, all the time so it's uh, but on the other hand <clears throat> those songs that she writes like uh, on the new album a song called watercolors in the rain uh, i got a very very old english lyric from pair that i kept for a very long time before i really you know dare to to work on it because it feels very strange to 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 write in another language when it's happening like that it's sort of makes for said even better i think because it's, it winds up what Roxette is all about even more. So I think she should write a little bit more. That song is a typical, typical uh, how I sound when I write songs. Roxette goes intellectual. <laughs> So how do you feel about the fact that, I mean, that, that, that Roxette's music is all programmed? I mean, like most music is today, in mm. fact, that it's kind of electronically created. Well, in the beginning, I think it was, I was so afraid of that it should sound very cold. It's very important to to mix up with warm interest uh, in instrument like uh, acoustic guitars or uh, oboe or uh, something very warm. <laughs> Och 
Så det var 2D och 2C. When I heard the music for the first time, I, the, the, the chorus, it was really so special. And that's, that's a song that I, I have dreamed about in the, in the nights. It's crazy. It's really follows, followed me everywhere. It's a really hard song to sing because the range of, of, the, of the song itself, the melody, is really, I think, two and a half, three octaves or something like that. It's really a tough one to sing. I couldn't sing it on the demo. <laughs> There's no escape for the broken hearted There's no return once you've lost your way I say a prayer now, our love's departed That you come back to stay And bring the perfect day Why do you think that Roxette has been so successful. I, I haven't got a clue because we're not a, we're not a sort of an image band. We don't people are not <laughs> buying our records because we have the hottest trousers in the business, you know. Hot, hot pants. Try to get through. You do the makeup now? No, this is just a security taping or just making it? No, we're going to send this signal to Japan. We will send oh, it. Okay. So now we will do now the makeup. Yeah, we will do it. Yeah. Okay. Actually, what you're doing is you're just miming to it. Yeah. And it's all to play back. What does that feel like? Uh, I don't like it at all. It's, it's strange to have so many people watching you and you... you because I, I think that live performance is communication. It's strange to just mind to your own voice. It's, so we, we have talked a lot, a lot about that. And, but it's time problems. That, that's why you do it. You're always so short, short of time. It must have been love, it's terrible, because I'm playing guitar and, you know, and there's not much guitar work in that song, and also it's like, I can just almost stay in the bar when we're doing that one. <laughs> Do you feel guilty about that, in fact? No, but it's, it's sometimes when you do all, all these television things, it's, you feel so, I don't know, it's important to do it, and I know that, but it's, it's such a, I mean, it's not real work. I mean, it's, it feels like you miming all these guitar parts, and it's, then it's over, and then you're off makeup, you know. So you're a bit, it's a bit, that's, that's when you're on automatic. You're yeah, bit, exactly, you know. and it's really hard to get into. What, you, what, what was the reason for doing that in the first place? Come here, Matt. Don't do that. Don't do that. Yeah. Yeah. Hi, this is Marie. And this is Per, and, and we, we are Rock Set, and you are watching X Large. The Grossen Zin. Hello, Finland. Rock Stop. Play it back. Hitline. No TV. Top 40. Video hits. MTV. Rage. Countdown Revolution. Hey, hey, it's Saturday. So you think the LP is going to be called Joyride? Yes. But have you any ideas for what the cover might be like? <coughs> well, the only, the only real um, idea we have right now is that we want to have a very colourful sleeve <coughs> and we want to have a quite clear pictures of Marie and myself in, in some sort of environment which goes in some way refers to the title. We, we, we got, we're going to do some different shots. We're going to do shots in, in, the, in the forest with all these 
autumn leaves, very goldish and very colorful clothes, as well as doing, doing uh, studio shots. So we haven't really decided the, the, the actual environment, what we're going to do. It's going to be a lot of colors. enjoying herself when she's uh, uh, performing, even if it's just performing in front of the camera or whatever. She's really, she really likes to do that. I'm more, I'm more of a uh, office type, you know. with what you've already got going too. as well as yeah. let it go through the... just let it sort of you can only see it when it goes through the dark parts but... okay okay <laughs>
Är det någonting som vi kan ta med dig förutom att du har, du har ju kappan på dig? Är det någonting annat som man kan hänga ovanför den? Nej. How do you feel, to what extent do you feel that TV has been important for you? Since we're working on, on a worldwide basis, I mean, it's, it's so hard to, to come and do all the TV shows. If you have vid videos, it's the perfect promotion tool for a band who, who works at this level. You, 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 it's just, uh, just a, like radio used to be. And radio, of course, is still very important, but video for us has been there. Very important. I say like, you know, a good two meters in any direction. Which means, of course, that you guys could you guys could be right together for a moment if you wanted to be. If you wanted to be. Alright, a couple meters in any direction from your box. Is it isn't it better if we change? Positions you want me on the left? You want me here? Because if you just stick it, I'm gonna smash her in the stomach with my You guys are so difficult. No, yeah, go ahead and swap. Okay. Uh, do you have a clock for a spider? Do the horse. Sound and camera, please. I'm really interested in acting, so I hope that maybe one of our singles that can be more acting and, and not just performers. I mean, do you want to act in films as well? Yeah, or? well, I don't know. It's, uh, I think to, 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 if you want to be in a movie or if you want to act, that it, it, you have to have a lot of courage to, to do that, and, and it's so different from the music business. I thought it was a lot easier. But a year ago, I said to you, could this possibly take 12 months for you to make? Yeah. In fact, it has taken yeah. almost 12 months. You laughed at the time. Yeah, it, it's such a long time, but we were recording three weeks, writing, recording, writing. You know, time goes very fast, you know. And uh, I think the best move we, decision we made was to, say, to stay in Stockholm and record. If we... If we uh, When you stay up north, you don't really feel the, the success in the same way as you do. We came to Los Angeles for four weeks ago, you know, and suddenly when you go to America, you feel it. It's there, you hear the songs on the radio all the time. In Stockholm, you don't really feel it. You, you can stay at home, work, be creative, forget about everything else. I mean, one of the interesting things about Roxette is whilst you've been away for this almost 12 months, making this LP, yeah. the group has actually become much bigger. Yeah. <laughs> So that, so that it's all, you know, the public are almost ready, yeah. almost primed. Yeah. It's almost like it's your time to yeah. have a new record the, out. The timing for, for the Joyride single and the album seems to be perfect. When did you realise it should be the title of the LP then? Um, well, I, I saw this interview. I read this interview with Paul McCartney. He said, writing songs with John Lennon was a long joyride. I said, that's a perfect word, that's a magic word to use. It has to be a song, you know. And, and it's, it's, and then I presented it to Marie and to Clarence and immediately. That's the name of the album. Yeah, it just, perfect. So when you schedule to go in the studio again? 
Who knows? <laughs> um, I think that after the sooner tour, than you want. Yeah, but <laughs> after the tour, we have to have, I think, a half year, six month break or something yeah. like that. Six minutes break. <laughs> what? 